I had a last minute request to give this vintage lane cedar chest a glow up before Christmas. Besides the seat being worn a little bit, the fabric's still in good shape and the tags are still on it. There's a little bit of um, damage on the wood, just a little bit beat up, and the inside is just pristine. You can tell no one's really used this, except to sit on. And we're just missing one of the knobs. The cushion is simply held in with screws from underneath, so it's real easy to remove. And I got busy removing all of the hardware, which wasn't very difficult at all. Next was a cleanup. I used Dixie Belle's White Lightning and followed it with a rinse. White Lightning is a TSP cleaner and I keep it diluted in a spray bottle. So now I'm taking the fabric that I've chosen for the top of the bench and I'm using my fan deck to match the colors. So I Think if you don't have a fan deck take it to your local retailer and ask them to help you um, this is the easiest way to decide uh, what colors you're going to use so now I'm not taking that fabric off the top because my new fabric is um, heavy enough it's kind of a canvas that you won't see the old underneath and it was a nice neat job so uh, since we're doing this kind of in a in a hurry we're not going to take the time to remove what's underneath if i were to sell this in my shop of course i would have to uh, remove all of that because i can't sell any upholstered furniture unless it's new in the state of pennsylvania you can get a tag uh, to sell upholstered furniture that is used it has to be sprayed and fumigated and I never went to the expense of the tag so just to keep it simple I just don't sell anything upholstered unless the upholstery is new so nothing unusual here just start from the sides make it taut and then the corners kind of get pleated so how do you like my little storage box for the staples? That's the gum packages. Now they put the gum in plastic. Um, so I, of course, reused it and separated and organized my different sizes of staples. I had some gray primer already in the rolling tray uh, from my last project. I had it sealed in plastic. So that was convenient and helped me get a quick start on this. I knew I needed to use a coat of boss because of the chipping and stuff that's on it, the, the little uh, marks and everything. So if we have any raw wood and we wanna paint over it, we need that so it doesn't bleed through. In addition to that, it's a pretty dark stain here, and we're going to use drop cloth, so um, which is a, a light creamy color. So we just want to get a jump on that, and having uh, using the gray primer is a great way to transition from your dark stain to a light color. It really helps you save on all the coats of your light color that you're doing.
After that dries, I use a brush to apply my drop cloth color. And um, I love the color of this. If you can picture the do uh, drop cloth with kind of those creamy tones, but also some gray tones in it. I just love this white. I think it's really pretty. Um, of course, I always have my camera there because I'm working in my back room. And if we have customers, I can just stop, put my brush in a plastic bag, seal up my paint, and do what I need to do. That's what it looks like after one coat. Not bad, but it needs a second coat. After that's done, I take this little stencil. It's just a bird and some leaves, and I'm not going to use the bird part, just the, the leaves. And I'm using the color sandbar and a little stencil brush. I'm getting the excess paint off because we don't want it to drip underneath. But I'm just kind of recreating the background um, that's in that fabric and just doing uh, just some subtle tone on tone leaves. Took me a minute to pick these colors, but I'm glad I did. It really looks nice with the fabric. This part of the process was so quick and easy to do and it still leaves the whole piece feeling neutral but yet we added some interest and pattern to it. So you might want to try that in different colors uh, tone on tone and see um, what it does for your project. I'm putting all the hardware back on. This time I'm using those little knobs on the three side faux drawers. And then I'm going to use some little uh, tiny drawer pulls that I have uh, that I got probably a long time ago that I've had in my stash from Wish maybe. That's a good source for some of those little miniature uh, hardware items.
they came with the tiniest screws in the world but they were too tiny for me so i used some larger screws and i had better luck with kind of running the screws through it first and then applying it so that's what that looks like and now i set the seat on top but and i have a screw in my screw gun ready to go and i'm just going to attach it now in the uh, holes where i pulled the screws out from before just a little tip when you're doing this sometimes you don't get it in the whole way so just back the screw out a tad and then reverse it and put it in again that's what i'm doing with this one and it just pulls it in and tightens that up Now it's time for some touch up. I take a little brush and go all over the piece in any places that I missed because I did paint it with the lid down. Of course, I didn't want to get any paint on any of that cedar lining, but now's the time that I'm just touching up all those little details. After my paints really dry, uh, per the request of the client, he had requested butterflies um, or cardinals, and I didn't have any cardinal um, transfers, so I'm using some butterflies and I'm randomly putting them on. Now I'm going for odd numbers, you know, because that's always pleasing to the eye, so I'm doing three. In the front and then one on each side so a total of five butterflies nothing big nothing overwhelming but just enough to give it a little touch um, of color on the outside and to satisfy the the desires of the client Sometimes I pull away the transfer and see that a little bit of it hasn't transferred. So it's an easy fix. You just lay it back on there and burnish it again until it all comes off. I use bronze gilding wax to touch up those screws because I used the larger screws and they weren't the same color. So this bronze kind of uh, covers that all up and it will harden and it won't rub off those screws. So now I'm using Easy Peasy Spray Wax because I just want to give this a quick seal. Uh, so just generously spraying it on and rubbing it in.
consider our channel membership. We're doing some fun stuff in the new year. I'm revamping things a little bit and there's definitely going to be a lot more exclusive content for channel members. So that's my little commercial. I'm not going to use any dark wax on this piece because I like the clean look of it. So we're just going to kind of keep it looking clean. Remember what it looked like before? This was the, the way it looked when it came in. A little dark, a little dated, and a little worn. Let's take a look at it now. Refreshed, bright, and cheerful. As always, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you like this content, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. You can find Statement Designs on social media. I'm hoping you have a blessed holiday season. And as always, stay well.